Hi, I'm Steve Rosales, and welcome to this edition of Belmont Journal. It's Friday, October 29th, 2023, and we're having continuing with our Chat with the Chair series. We have a new chair since our last segment. We have uh, Roy Epstein here uh, with us today. So, Roy, nice to have you here. Pleasure welcome, to be welcome. here, Steve, although by my calendar, it's September 29th, not October. It is September 29th. Oh, I wrote October. I'm a month ahead. I suppose that's better than a month behind. Looking ahead to the next So there you go. Well, time's, time's passing quickly, apparently. I mean, this morning I got up, my house was like 59 degrees. It, it feels like October. Yes. So uh, anyway, so let's kick off. You're now the new cha chair of the select board. I might slip into board of selectmen because I've been here a long time. But You're right. So you're chair of the select board. Congratulations, I, I think. think, or condolences, no, depending, no, on, it's, depending can... on your viewpoint. Uh, both are appropriate, <laughs> I think. <laughs> depending on the time and topic, I would think. Uh, well, you've been there since July. There's a, a different turnover. So you started, what, beginning of July rather than the usual April election? Well, it's, it's going to be July from now on. We synced it up so that uh, the transitions happen after town meeting to have a little more continuity. Okay. Well, that works. And uh, so welcome. You're on, you're on the seat. I've been noticing you on uh, TV. The meetings run pretty well, as best you can. Uh, so we might as well let's just... Slide right into it, shall we? We've got sure. 30 minutes. We have a variety of things. Maybe we can touch on some things, things we don't have. We'll have you back if, you, if you're brave enough to come on no, back. I'd be we'll, delighted. We'll have you back. So let's start. Okay. I was sort of taken by a little bit of surprise when I've seen that there's been a reorganization of the Office of Community Development. Glenn Clancy has been the longtime director. Now I see if you look on the website, he's now the town engineer, and there's been a new hire, uh, town planner. And the name has apparently been changed, I think, to... Office of Planning and Building, if I got that right. Yeah, I'm not even sure what the new name is, Steve, but... Uh, <laughs> it's that new. Yeah. <laughs> so w why the shakeup or why the reorganization? Why is that a good thing? Well, in some sense, it's more um, uh, form over substance. Remember that the town had a, town, a magnificent town planner in Jeffrey Wheeler. He did. Who unfortunately died a few years ago, and his position really has not been properly filled until just this month. We have a new town planner who's excellent. Um, we also had a resident engineer. That position was eliminated a couple of years ago, so that was being done by Glenn. And then there was code enforcement. Uh, so what you're seeing now is really kind of a restoration of community development as it had been, but it's now being reorganized a bit, so engineering will I think be more located within DPW. The town planner will be working with Aria Gurdian to be a, a planning and code inspection, code enforcement division and uh, permits. And I, I think it works well. Frankly, it's with an eye toward uh, Glenn Clancy um, ultimately having to retire. He won't be here forever. And I think he won't. He will Come not. Come on. How, how, who would want to leave? Well, it, it'll Once be. Once in paradise, I mean, it is. What it is. Well, you know, it'll be a huge uh, uh, transition. That, but, understood, absolutely. But Glenn has actually put a lot of thought into a, into a succession plan that I think will work out very well. And, and as part of that, he's moving back to his first uh, love, which is engineering and uh, the planning and the code enforcement and all that other work will be better balanced among the other three, the other people in uh, what had been OCD before. Okay, so uh, so when people want building plans or uh, building permits and zoning sort of board of appeal variances, and special permits, they still go to the same window, I guess. Just same window and almost the same people. It'll be Aria Gurdian for a lot of it, and the, but then Chris Ryan, our new planner, will be the main point of contact for uh, planning board and also zoning board of appeals. I think. Okay, well, all right. So and and Glenn. Uh, Clancy as the town engineer, will he be remaining up there? Is he going to relocate perhaps sometime? That function be within the DPW? I, I think physically he'll stay in Homer building for the time being because there's no place else to go. But, uh, but I think t the focus of his work will be more on engineering matters, which we have a lot. You know, of course, there's roads, but there's also traffic planning and incinerator cap and all sorts of uh, functions that are really engineering based and they need the full-time attention of an engineer and Glenn is perfect for that. Okay well let's uh, 
see how that all, all works out. I assume that's being done to the betterment of the town and the more efficiency, and sometimes it just takes forever to get stuff out of that department. Understanding, uh -huh. of course, that they're understaffed, and I get they're all wearing various hats, but, but from a consumer perspective, where oftentimes time is money, yep. it, it translates into a lot of frustration <laughs> well, and consternation, I, and perhaps, you know, they, let, they may I, let their feelings known. <laughs> I've heard it from time to time, but I, I, I think particularly when, once the resident engineer comes on board, which should happen in the next couple of weeks, I, I think you'll see a, an increase in throughput throughout the whole department. So there's going to be someone else coming on? Or is, or is Glenn, when you say resident engineer, are you talking Glenn or are you talking a new position, a, a, a new body? A new body. Oh, but, well, okay. It's, 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 it's refilling the position that had existed until it was cut a couple of years ago. Okay. Uh, but that's to handle what I think would be somewhat lower level things like making sure road work and sidewalk work is supervised properly. And uh, we heard a bit about that on uh, Monday night. Uh, but Glenn would be the more senior person. Okay. Well, um, and this is already effective. This is this is already taken place, and so we're just. I got to go down and meet the new town planner. I guess. You should do that. Yeah, I should do that. Yeah. You got to have him on the show. Maybe that's a good idea. Okay. All right, we'll have him here and and, and meet the public. Good for him. Uh, okay. Next thing. So. We're coming in. Okay, it is September 29th, not October, yep. but. The leaves are starting to turn in my yard, and they're starting to fall. Yeah. So leaf blowers were uh, a hot, hot commodity, I guess, at the last town meeting, and uh, you know, people voting, and it was sort of you've been sort of been the spearhead, or at least the person sort of shepherding that through. So, how's that working? What's been your experience? Give us an update on leaf blowers. Well, I'm very proud of leaf blowers because when this whole effort started. Um, Two or three years ago, there were skeptics who said it couldn't be done. But um, the the bylaw the town leading town meeting adopted a year ago has worked out, I think, extremely well. Uh, compliance has been very good. There have been a couple of outliers, but we've approached those individual companies, and they've uh, generally uh, comported with the bylaws. So. You know, what people have noticed if you walk around is how quiet it is in the summer compared to years before. The, the use of gasoline-powered leaf blowers over the summer is supposed to be zero and in practice has been way, way down. Uh, but as the bylaw uh, specifies, as of October 1st, the gasoline units can come back for the fall work, which is uh, generally a bit heavier because you have leaves that get wet and so forth. But over the summer, I think it was a terrific success. People have complaints or complaints down? I did not get... Enforcement of these are always sort of the issue, especially given the manpower of... Not that, the, not... I don't want to hone in on this one, but sort of bylaw enforcement is always sort of a question when you pass a new bylaw. Yeah, but this, this is something where the town really came together. You know, when this whole issue became... Uh, significant, which is uh, in the summer of 2020, which is the first COVID year, and a lot of people were at home in the summer with the windows open. I can't count the number of emails I got from all over town about leaf blowers. Uh, this year, I got, I think, one email from somebody who was complaining the day after the bylaw came into effect that somebody was using a gasoline unit, and that was it. So the, the absence of complaints, I think, is uh, a mark of success. Okay, well, I'm, we'll so, see, good. And in terms of uh, enforcement, the, the Board of Health stepped up, uh, and they've actually had very little to do. So uh, it, as a town, I think people recognize that it, it was not only the right thing to do, but it was, uh, it was very doable. Uh, they, the gasoline units weren't needed over the summer, and, and everybody's better off for it. Okay, well, we'll see. Come, uh, well... You know, as I said, I'm a month ahead, but in yeah. it turns October 1. Uh, Over the weekend. <laughs> yeah, Sunday. All right, we'll continue to, we will continue to monitor that and see how it works come leaf season. Yes. Great. Thank you, Roy. All right, so we have a variety of other things. Let's pick the next one. How about uh, MBTA Communities Program, zoning changes? So in five minutes, what is it? And... Uh, <laughs> 
What is it? What's its status? Well, <laughs> uh, well, I, I sort yeah, of know, but I'm sort of trying to let it, the public know about this. That's the purpose. It, it's yeah. it's very much a work in progress. So there was a a state law change that mandates that every town that has MBTA service basically come up with zoning that allows considerably increased density uh, over what they had up to now. So on paper, for Belmont, we are supposed to create zoning that allows for construction of 1,632 units. And when you consider that Belmont has you know, maybe 10,000 housing units, that is a big number. Uh, we formed a committee. I am co-chair with Rachel Heller from the Housing Trust. We have members from Economic Development, Board of Assessors, uh, Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion Committee, Historic District Commission, and the Planning Board, uh, all working on how to uh, create the zoning, where the district should be located, what types of structures would be permitted, and that sort of thing. Uh, it's a real complicated question, but the goal is to come into compliance, and Belmont has a deadline. This is all mandated by the state. Uh, Belmont has a compliance deadline of December 2024, and we are trying to get something before town meeting for June of next year. If that doesn't quite work, then we'll look for a special town meeting in September. So December 2024 to do what? To have zoning in place that would allow developers by right to build multifamily housing, which means they don't have to get a special permit from the planning board. They can just buy a parcel and by right construct uh, housing, multifamily housing, which by this law has to be a minimum of at least three units, but could be more if the lot's big enough. And, and where in town do they go? That is what we're working on now. Um, so they have to be within a certain radius or range of a, of a train station, yeah, or a bus stop, what qualifies for all that? It, commuter there, rail station? I mean, we have two there. Is yeah, we're so we, we are defined as a commuter rail community. So the okay. commuter rail is the focus of it. There's a kind of a compli complicated formula where there's a certain minimum number of acres that have to be included in this zoning and a, a portion of those acres have to be within half a mile of one of the other train stations and so forth. So we're trying to spread it around in a way that makes sense and complies with these various requirements. So there'll be some around Waverly because that's where a train station is. There'll be some around Belmont Center. And we're looking at other parts of town uh, to spread out the rest of it, and hopefully it'll be balanced. And I tell you what my interest is in this primarily is uh, I think there's a number of parcels in Belmont that are underutilized. And this zoning actually would give an opportunity for a developer to come in and do something of a higher economic value. And I think the benefit would be both uh, increased tax revenue and there also would be additional housing, but I think the tax revenue and the additional housing units should just about uh, balance out. Why don't, uh, are you prepared to identify a couple of these lots or is it not the time? I, I don't think it's appropriate All at right, the moment. That's, but That's fair but, enough. But we will be discussing... But I have to ask the follow-up. It's the obvious yeah. follow-up. Yeah. <laughs> What's that? That that uh, what parcels are you are you, oh, are you considering? Well, or do you think that that are underutilized? It's, it's not going to be a secret. Uh, there'll be a map present. We have our MBTA Communities Advisory Committee that's been meeting about once a week, and we'll we'll be presenting a map probably in two weeks that will be pretty specific. All right, and, and what if Belmont just decided we're not going to do that? I mean, I'm looking at, you told yeah. me 1,632 units yeah. jammed in within a half a mile somewhere in Waverly Square and Belmont Center. Well, uh, I don't know where you're going to put them all, well, and I can't imagine people are going to be too happy about that. Uh, so what if they just, what if we said, I think there is a town, might be, I don't know, what's it, North Attleboro, one of these towns no. I've seen, just going to say we're not going to do it. What happens I if think, we just don't do it? I think Holden said they're not going to do okay. it. Okay, so what happens if Belmont says, you know, we're not going to do that. We don't have any room. We, we already have multifamily housing. What if we don't do it? Well, you know, this started out on 
paper with the penalty being, well, the town wouldn't be eligible for certain state grants. But since the money was small, you might say, you know, we can forego that. But since then, you know, I said at town meeting last year, I thought that the penalties were going to be escalated, and they have been. So now the attorney general is indicating that she will sue towns that don't comply. And I think that's a situation Belmont should avoid. Yeah, so, I, I, okay, well, I, but why they make chocolate and vanilla, I'd say, let them sue us. Let the courts figure it yeah, out. I can't imagine that this is, is incredibly legal, quite frankly. Well, I can't imagine that state, local zoning and control. I understand snob zoning. I understand spot zoning. Yeah. But we have a community. Belmont is different than Cambridge, which is different from Newton, which is different from Lancaster or different from, yeah. uh, you know, Rutland or any of the uh, western suburbs. We're just a different community. We're three, four and a half square miles, and densely it's, populated. It's but, very, yes, it's so, all, it's And there's easy. no room to do much of anything. So to jam 1,600 units... and. Look, I, this is not a personal thing between you and me, but you happen to be sitting in front of me at the moment, yeah. and I don't know who else I would tell this to, but, you know, Belmont always seems to be afraid of getting sued. But well, part of me says, so what? Let them sue us and, and let the court figure it out. But I, I don't think you're going to have a lot of people very happy with 1,600 new units but Steve, in various me, parts of town. Well, Kids, you know, this, that, and the other thing. But good, I'm listening. All right. All uh, right. So let me clarify a couple of things. <laughs> okay. One, but, come on, we're we're friends here. We're having a discussion, but uh, it, so it, it's, a, it's this is a big change. It is a, right, and uh, it concerned me a lot when I first heard about it. Uh, but it's there's a difference between zoning and actually building something. So with this, this is just zoning that says in principle something could be built. It doesn't mean anything will be built. That requires a developer to actually come forward and 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 take out a permit. So just to give you a, an example of uh, uh, how this could work, I think there are certain parcels. Everybody's, uh, it's no secret that everybody points to pure coat as uh, something that potentially could be improved. So pure coat, at least the way I think about it, would have an ex potentially an exit strategy. Uh, it's an industrial site. Uh, it's not part of the school campus. It won't be part of the school campus, but to be developed in this way actually could be a net positive. And there are other sites around town that are kind of similar. Uh, and I th that, that's part one. Part number two is that um, the Belmont Housing Authority is actually eligible to be counted under this program. So work that's going to happen anyway, like at... Um, on the, the um, Sherman Gardens project on Sycamore Street mm -hmm. is going to be folded into this. So I, I think in a, in a number of ways, the, the effect is going to be mitigated and spread around. And I, I don't have the, the dire sense that some people might about this. Okay, well, you know, my, my comment would be then, but then, then, then why have it? I will, you know, if it if it's just going to be in principle, then well, uh, why have it? That's just the that's just the I'm trying to think the beginning, the nose in the tent. I yeah. forget the, I forget the analogy, but whatever's nose is now in the tent. Agreed, but I mean, I view it as a mandate that that can be managed in a way that I think will turn out to be acceptable. I really do. Well, I, okay. Well, you know, it, it's my my first blush is that it's it doesn't help the town. I mean. 1,632 units, that's what, four times the uh, what we have at, uh, down on Route 2, the Belmont Royal. Yeah. They have kids. They probably have 100, a couple hundred kids down there. It's not, a couple, schools. it's not a couple of hundred, but I would There's be... at least 100 kids down there, uh, out of the schools. I would be astonished if 1,600 units were actually built because Belmont is so densely built already. All right, well, you don't need a special permit. You can do it by right. Developers will find a way. Well, but I'll watch it. Okay, moving on. Uh, we'll see how. <laughs> all right. Good luck with that. Uh, all right. We have. Uh, what do we got here? We got uh, about ten minutes. All right. So a couple minutes. I won't go on this big. Concord Avenue traffic and the new Belmont High School, Middle School, Belmont High Middle School campus. Yeah. It's obvious to my eyes. I'm not a traffic engineer. I'm just a I've 
I chaired the Traffic Advisory Committee back in the day. Mm -hmm. uh, but my eyes tell me and my experience through town tell me is that there's not enough parking on that site. You put 2,200 kids on the site, uh, you know, 20 kids a classroom, that's 100 teachers, there's administrators, there's parents, there's people coming in and out, there's after school sports. There's obviously not enough parking there. They're parking all up and down Concord Ave in the middle of the street, that stripe, there's the orange barriers, the little poles, lights, the whole thing. The whole thing looks to me a mess. Uh, and they had a parking lot, that's what chafes me. They had a parking lot there that they took out and put grass there, and all I see is Canadian geese stomping all over it. So, again, um, what's going on with there? Can't we put the parking lot back? We need more parking there. We just do. Uh, well. In this man's opinion. You may know that I had asked the high school building committee to uh, retain about a half of that parking lot last January, and they declined to take that up. But... Look at what's going on there now. The site right today, with the school, high school open and the middle school open, there is enough parking on the site for the staff. There really is. Uh, the student parking right now does fit along what I call the corridor, which is Concord Avenue from the mobile station out to Underwood Street. Uh, it's getting pretty full, particularly in the springtime but the students do fit there. So I would say that so far it's working. Uh, maybe it's not anybody's perfect solution, but I don't know what a perfect solution is when, when the site is only so big. Uh, but it, I think there will be an issue in the future if, student, uh, if the number of student drivers really overflows the parking spaces that we have on the corridor, then we have to go to a plan B, which I have um, in reserve, but we're not there yet, Steve. I think right now it's actually working in terms of parking. The um, area is obviously crowded in the morning, but at last, I've been out there so many times, you've probably seen me standing on the corner. It's very busy for about 20 minutes in the morning and 20 minutes in the afternoon. That's, um, that's undeniable, but it's, uh, it's transitory. There is, uh, I think it's, I actually think under the circumstances it's working out remarkably well. Well, I would respectfully disagree. It's, it's, it's a problem that was created, um, and you say the corridor. Well, to the detriment of, to me, the corridor and the detriment of the quality of life here in Belmont. I mean, you've taken, I've said it before, and... Uh, it, to me, Concord Avenue back in the day, and I've been here since first grade at Winbrook, so that's yeah. going on 63 years. And it was our signature street. When you entered Belmont from Cambridge, you knew you were entering a different community. It had the, you know, the Greenway. It had the, the Meridians down the middle of Concord Avenue. It had the flowering pear trees in the springtime. It had the pond. It had now the then, now ripped out new high school. The field, Underwood, the nice looking library, all the way down to the bridge. You knew you were in a different, uh, more, not so citified, suburban, I get it, but different vibe, different feel, aesthetically a beautiful street. Now we got stripes everywhere, we have multiple traffic signals, we got bike lanes, we got cars in the middle of the street, we have those ridiculously ugly orange cones and posts, and that's a self-created situation. Created not by me, and I bet if you put it in front of the voters, it would get killed. What, what would get killed? I think if you put this in front of the voters to take out all that, whatever you've done there, uh, I think well, the, Steve, the ballot would come back as a get rid of what we got, return us back to Concord Ave, and put a parking lot back in the high school where it's supposed to be, where it was, that they took out for no apparent reason that I know of. Um, obviously, Concord Avenue is a little different than what it was. Um, given that we have, given the school is what it is, uh, there is no other place to put students. You had a parking lot. Yeah, but I think the new school was, you know, we can't uh, relitigate that. There's a new well, school. Well, why? Because the new school is built. So you yeah, well, you had a parking lot in a spot that's now just grass. Put the parking lot back there. 
But the students fit on the street. I, well, yeah, okay. they, they, I just I, don't I, like them on the street. Yeah. It's ruined the whole flow. Have you tried? Well, I try to get from Point Day. My office in Cushing Square takes me 40 minutes to go from Cushing Square to Farnham Street. That shouldn't happen. But, but the, I don't think the student parking is the reason for that, Steve. It really is, and, and the traffic signal at the bottom of Godin, if you didn't have that traffic signal there, there would be a total gridlock that would, that would make Manhattan look like an empty well, park. I, I don't know, I, I don't know. It's really, the, the traffic. That, that, that old high school for 50 years worked pretty well. In that current, all you did was add. They just, they moved it around, I, I don't know. I don't want to second guess that, but for 50 years, the old high school, which was new when I went there, uh, uh, worked. Traffic was in, traffic was out. We had the 20 minutes Steve, in the morning, we had 20 minutes in the afternoon, and it worked. So, anyway, Steve, I don't want to I, beat you know, on you. You can come no, on and give you me know, a response. That's all right. I, I I'll think, let you respond. I but. think everybody knows that I'm somebody who uh, easily gets into the weeds. But uh, <laughs> I, given that, you know, I, I came into this late. I came in after the building was in construction, and basically fair the, enough. Uh, the charge was fair try, enough. try to find a way to make this work. And I, I think what we have is, I don't know of a better solution. Nobody is. Well, why'd they take the parking lot out? And then I'll move on to something else. Uh, why'd they take that parking lot out? I can't answer that question. Okay. I, I made my case, and it was it basically said denied. So there was something wrong with that system. Mm -hmm. Anyway, moving on. Okay. I still love you, Roy. What can I say? <laughs> <laughs> that's. that's uh, okay, special town meeting yep. coming up in, uh, in uh, we got about four minutes. So it's in, coming in November. Give me a preview of what might be presented at the special town meeting in, in November. There's a lot of interesting stuff going on. It's going to start with um, some proposals to revise uh, zoning code to hopefully make it easier for restaurants to open in Belmont, which I think is only a good thing. Mm -hmm. uh, there's going to be, uh, let me see if I, there's going to be some administrative stuff that I'll pass over. Uh, I believe that I and my colleagues will move forward with a proposal to remove uh, the police from civil service. Uh, this will be a kind of a, a redo of something that uh, we attempted a couple of years ago, but I, I think the reasons will be clearer now. That we had a forum where town meeting members had a number of questions, I think. Uh, we're in the process of finishing uh, answering those questions, and I think people will see it's advantageous. But this is police only, let me just emphasize. It's not fire. Okay. Uh, I think there'll be a, a uh, there's a citizen's petition that's already been filed to make the Board of Assessors appointed instead of elected. Uh, I have suggested behind the scenes that we actually take this up at a special town meeting in January, the same way we did a special town meeting for the treasurer this year. I think that's how it'll play out and we'll see how it goes. Uh, there's another citizen's petition to alter the tax rate for the country club. I don't know if people know that country clubs in, in Massachusetts get a 75% reduction on their property tax by a state law. Uh, that can be uh, reversed by a, a local home rule petition, which is what this petition is aimed at. Uh, I still do, I doubt it will be successful, but uh, uh, I'm inclined to support it as, as, a, as a symbolic effort, even though I don't generally support symbolic efforts. Um, uh, and that'll make for an interesting town meeting. Hmm. Uh, the, the reason... It's unlikely to be successful as that home rule petition still have to be voted on by the state legislature. And there's no appetite in the state legislature to um, undo this tax preference for country clubs. That's just the way it goes. Uh, okay, so some, well, it sounds to be pretty active then. It'll be interesting, yeah. And we'll see what boils out. And there's still time for citizens to, to do things or is that warrant closed? Uh, that window is closed, but okay. that's a plenty busy town meeting. So, no, no I'm just saying, so, but, yeah. you know, even though it's only 29 September. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Thanks for pointing that out. I lost a, a month. Uh, so, assessors, uh, tax proposals, some zoning, um, remove the police from civil service. Um, 
It's a lot. Okay, that is a lot. Anything with the energy? Anything there? Oh, and then that I'm one there? sorry, no. you reminded me. Yes, uh, the stretch energy code came up in the spring, and uh, Mark Paylillo, when he was chair, uh, committed to taking this up again in the fall, and we're going to do that also. There, there's a question about the effective start date, even if we adopt it. It's, it's a more stringent energy code for new construction, uh, and there's. The, the, the effective date of adopting it is still the biggest open question in my mind. Okay. And on that, we have to stop. So oh, we'll keep true. So gosh, there we go. We've been, fast, it's, it's a fast 30 minutes. It's a fast-paced deal. Thanks for being brave enough to come on back. Well, invite me again because there's more to talk about. We've had uh, Roy okay. Epstein, chair of the uh, board, select board, and chat with the chair. Until next time, I'm Steve Rosales. Take care. And thank you, Steve.